Hello everyone, Sarah from Sarah Humphrey Embroidery and today I'm going to show you how you can embellish your cross stitch um, and any other embroidery as well in fact. Um, so we have just reached our 100,000 subscriber on our YouTube channel. Thank you to everybody who subscribed. If you're one of those we really appreciate it. It's a really big milestone to reach and in celebration of that we are we're looking at gold and everything gold and we've got a really special giveaway for you so if you haven't seen the first video on this gold thread do check that out you can see that up here you're really going to want to watch that one because we are giving away something very special we've got one of these this is um, a beautiful display set from dmc of real 24 karat gold thread it's this thread here you won't get this bit you'll get a new scale I promise you this is a bit I've been using we're actually giving one of these away so do check that video out and um, to see all about this and about the project that we're making as well and um, to see how you can get your hands on that while we're in this celebratory mood we've also decided to give away some runners-up prizes as well so we've got some new things to give away which I haven't mentioned yet but you'll need to keep watching this video to see what they are so do stick around uh, for that so before we look at what I've been making, I just wanted to address a few comments that came up in that first video about the actual gold thread. So this is it here. Used a good bit of it, you can see. Um, and I just wanted to first of all mention um, about this thread um, and being gold because a few comments came back saying, why aren't you doing a gold work design um, or can you couch with it or can you do underside couching? Um, it's not a gold work embroidery technique thread. So this is gold work. It's a gold work embroidery technique and um, we have loads of videos on this if you're interested in this and one all about these metals and threads as well that go into making this because they're very specific to this technique. So that's um, gold work and gold work threads. But this thread isn't a gold work thread, it's a thread made out of gold so it's a an embroidery thread a normal sewing embroidery thread like your normal stranded cotton or your floss um, but it's made out of gold so there's two sort of distinctions there of it not being a gold work thread but it being a thread made of gold so you can just do normal stitching with this I chose to do cross stitch but you could just do normal freestyle stitching or put it in with any of your projects as well so I just wanted to clear that one up to start with so I've done quite a bit of stitching with this gold thread now um, and I'm a bit more used to how it stitches. It's not the easiest thing to stitch with. It is a metallic thread. We have a video on metallic threads and how to use those as well. So do, do look at that if you want to use these threads. So it took me a little while to learn how to handle it really because it did strip um, if I wasn't careful with it. So the first thing that I did, and I did this in the, the video actually, was I changed my needle size. So I started with a 26 tapestry um, and I very quickly went upper size and a larger needle so the size 20 um 24 tapestry needle and the bigger the eye the bigger the hole it makes going through the fabric so the idea is the hole was a bit bigger and the thread passed through the hole and didn't wear the thread so much so that definitely did make a difference um i also found um the way i stitched changed so if i stitched a bit more slowly <laughs> and I wasn't pulling the thread quickly I could listen to the thread and listen to the noises that it makes because it does tell you what it wants you to do if you can hear it and it's making a sort of a pulling scratching scraping noise that's not really generally very good um, because it's wearing the thread so if you just slow down a little bit and just pull it through you can listen to it and you can just hear and feel as well actually if it's just catching on the thread and you can just either make the hole bigger or just check your thread or change your thread on whichever one you need to do so I did find that slowing down my stitching did help me to use this thread as well. So one of the um, rules of cross stitch, if you like, if you want to call it a rule, one of the things I think everybody agrees on is that when you work with cross stitches, you've got two stitches, one over the top of each other. You should always work the bottom one in the same direction and the top one in the same in the opposite direction but keep that the same throughout keep them consistent so the light bounces off your stitches in the same way. Now um, I did discover quite quickly that when I turned my frame round, I thought it was easy if I stitch it upside down. I was holding it in my hand and doing it. And of course that changes which way you do the cross changes. So just be aware of that. If you do want to turn your frame around, you can do that. And um, because some people I know like to work top to bottom rather than left to right. Um, so just be aware that you are still doing your cross stitches all the same way, whichever way around you have your frame. So the thing I got asked is about the design. Now I got this from the book that came in the presentation set with the gold thread, um, which is a 
DMC book um, and it's some of the designs from their archives and I adapted it so it's a design by Teresa de Dilmont she did a lot of designs for DMC she made loads and loads and loads of books I've got a couple of them here so these are some originals that she did we covered this one is quite some detail when we did the unboxing of this this um, gold thread so you can see what's inside that in that video there and she did this um, needlework encyclopedia um, quite well known in the embroidery world and um, just she covers everything and that there isn't anything the woman couldn't do <laughs> she was quite amazing um, so those are two original books but she did do a lot more as well so she's got some cross stitch books and some other encyclopedias as well and the really good news is you can get all of those online for free to browse through and I will put the links to some of them below but once you find one you can get to the others as well and this design is actually from one of her cross stitch um, design books so it's from the first one so I'll put the link there and the page number that you can actually get this design from I did adapt it <laughs> a little bit for me because that's what I like to do so I changed it from a border motif into a single motif which I talk about in the first video so if you want to do my adaptation of her design I will actually chart that so this is the one that I'm actually working from so it looks a bit messy this is my um, in progress working design but I'll make this all neat and I'll chart this up um, nicely so if you want to do my version of it I'll put that on the free stuff page on the website I'll try and do it soon so it's up there for you and you can have a go at it yourself so I'm going to embellish my cross stitch that I've done. I will show you that in a second. I promise we're getting to that bit. Um, but I just wanted to show you what I pulled out from my stash because I think it's nice to add some extra detail to your embroidery with some other materials. And the 24 karat gold is really luxurious as well. I thought, what can I add to that that will add even more luxury to it? So I found these things in my stash. So I've got a couple of things here. So I've got some more gold. I've got some spangles. So this is like the gold work version of sequins if you like um jonathan when he comes to edit this is going to roll his eyes because because <laughs> i love my spangles and i try and get them into everything um, and that always makes him roll his eyes which is quite funny so yes we're putting spangles on it and i've got some beads here as well so i've got this nice beautiful deep red color i was thinking of jewels and and something like that and these are glass beads here and i've got two sizes which will help me add something to the dimension to give it to give it some different dimension there um, I've got some pearls as well so the color scheme that I've used for this is from the display box so it was um, gold blue navy blue and white like a pearly white box so I thought some pearls would be really lovely in this they're really luxurious I've got some real ones here and I've just got these little pearly type beads as well that I'm going to put on so again two sizes just to change that up a little bit and then I found some of these which are beautiful iridescent beads I'm only going to use one of these and I'm going to hang it off the bottom just to finish it off so the great thing about adding things like beads and sequins and pearls and whatever it is you want to add is you can see what it's going to look like before you actually sew them down so I did spend quite a little time quite an amount of time putting the beads and sequins on and trying them out so I did that I'll show you that here that process here so I did that I had a pair of tweezers and I just placed them all in position on my cross stitch just to see what I liked and I could move things around and go oh no I don't like that so much I prefer that and I actually put them all in place and then I took a photograph of it so I know where they all go I haven't got to remember that now so that's what's really great about that is you can try it out first so let's have a look at what I've actually stitched now so this is my design this is my adaptation of Teresa's um, border design and I made it into this heart shape and I did mention in the first video about changing the design I took her design and I thought I'd plot it out so I could see it more clearly um, and then in that process I actually made some changes I thought oh it'd be nice to add this in and add that in which I talked about in that first video but the process didn't stop because when I was stitching it I did the same as well so I thought I'd got my design that I charted that I changed and then when I came to stitch it I changed it again 
So I've changed the end of the bird's tail a little bit. Um, I've taken some of the stitches out the heart because the other thing I thought when I'm embellishing it, I'm adding extra things to it. I really want a space for those things to go into. And if I fill it all with stitches, then I've got to put things on the top. So I've actually left it fairly open and I've left these open as well. I changed the middles of these and took some of the stitches out of the middle of these big flowers at the top and out of the heart so that I can add things in. So it's OK to do that. <laughs> things keep evolving. Um, the longer you spend on something, the more you'll see see how you can improve it. So that's the process that happened, which was absolutely fine. And as long as I did the same to one side as I did to the other, that was OK. I did actually get my count wrong. I will confess to that to show you. So this little bird here ended up one hole further out from the centre than he was on my design. Um, and all I did was just make sure this one was the same. It fitted in still because I'd gone that way and not that way with it. So I just made sure I did the same on the other side and it came out fine. So don't worry too much about if it's not quite right. Um, there's always ways to solve it. And this 24 karat gog thread didn't really want to take it out if I didn't have to um, and I just made it work like that. So whenever you're going to embellish something with beads and sequins there's three ways that you can put those down. So you can either use the thread that you were stitching with. So I did all gold here so if I stitch them down with gold that gold will blend into my gold stitching. Now I'm not going to do that um, for several reasons. One because I don't think this thread is going to um, last very long for that. I need to put it in a really small needle to get the bead on and I think that's going to shred the thread so I'm not going to use the gold thread to that for that. So another way that you can do it is to use an invisible thread. Um, so invisible obviously it's, <laughs> it's a see-through thread but that is quite hard to use. It's quite bendy that one and you won't be able to see what I'm doing on the camera, so I'm not going to use that one either. So the other thing that you can do is you can match your thread to either your embellishment or to the fabric. Now my embellishments change colour. I've got gold, I've got pearl and I've got red. So I'd have to change the thread each time I change the colour of the thing I was putting down. But if I use blue to match my fabric, then I can use that throughout all of it. Um, and then I don't need to worry about changing the thread and I know that those... Um, threads will blend in with my fabric so that's what I'm going to do so I've got a blue sewing cotton stripe quite a strong sewing cotton here I'm just going to use a single length if I think that it needs to go through twice because sometimes beads are more secure if you use a double thread I'll just go back through it twice because some things I'm only going to want to use once and I am also going to run it through my beeswax this will just help to stick the fibres together make it a little bit stronger while I sew those down I'm going to start my embellishments with the little tiny seed beads. So I've got my pearly ones and I've got my red ones. They're slightly different size because I didn't couldn't match the sizes, but that's okay. I don't mind that. Got them on my velvet board so they don't run around and fall off and go all over the floor. I'm going to show you in this area here. So I've got my um, navy blue thread to match my fabric. I've got it in a very small needle. I've got it in a number 12. People often ask, oh, what size needle do you use for your beads? Um, basically just one that the bead will go over with a point on it as well, unless you're doing following the holes in the cross stitch design. But I'm just going to put them wherever I want them. So I'm not using a tapestry design. I'm using an embroidery a tapestry needle. I'm using an embroidery needle so I can just use this as a piece of fabric. So just the smallest needle that you can get your bead over is, is a, good, a good way to look at that, if you like. So I'm going to do around the middle here. So I'm going to start as I normally do with a little knot out the way and it's going to be a bit difficult for you to see this until I put a bead on because the colour matches the, the fabric but I'm just doing my two small stitches as I normally do just to start it right in that corner there there's a bead going over that so those will get covered up. I'm just going to alternate that so I'm going to come up on the edge of that gold there Let's take a white one first so you can clearly see that. Just thread onto your needle. Then you need to lie your thread down. So the bead will be upright, the needle's going to go through it and down the other side. So your thread will come up through and down. So make sure that you just lie that down there so the needle sits in place and then take your needle down the other side not worrying too much about the holes for this just use it like a piece of fabric I can just stitch those on so 
first one on and then I'm going to put one in each of those corners and I'm going to alternate my colours. So I'm just bringing my needle out there. It is kind of in a hole, but I'm not too wor worried about whether I actually go in the hole or not for this. I've got a sharp needle, so it will make a new hole if I need to. So just thread on the red one. Now I'm just going to alternate all the way to the bottom of the thread, lie that thread down, and take the needle down the other side of the bead to the back. If you think that's not going to be secure enough, you can come back up the first side and go through it again. You can do two stitches through that. You don't want your beads and your sequins and your pearls all falling off. So let's just alternate now. Another white one to the bottom. Lay it down. Needle through to the back. We do have videos about how to put sequins down and beads down lots of different ways to do it as well depending on what you're stitching so do check that one out if you're interested in adding beads to your work they really are a lovely thing to add they go really beautifully with embroidery and i'm adding this to cross stitch but you can add this to any kind of embroidery really it doesn't have to be cross stitch so last few going on so this one, I'm actually going to change direction and come up there and I'm going to go down here. So up top left, down bottom right, just so it fits in that little gap there. I can go back to my original position for this one. So one more red one. So they're very easy to put on beads. They're not a difficult thing to do. A little bit fiddly perhaps, but... There we go, and the final one. And there. So <clears throat> let's have a look at putting the large beads on. So I've got these nice larger beads here, these glass red crystally type ones. So I'm going to put those in these circles here. I thought they look really lovely in there. Now, really, these are a bigger bead they could do with a double thread. So you can either double your thread up or you can go through the bead twice. I'm going to use the same thread that I've already used for the small ones. So I'm just going to go through my bead twice. And I'm going to make sure I put them the same way around. So I'm going to point them from the outside to the inside. I'm going to come up a little bit further out through the fabric now. So the point of my needle is helping me do that. don't need to worry about those holes. Just thread it on like you did before to your needle. Right in position so that they come from the outside and point to the centre. So they're all the same way around and there's a little bit of consistency in there. And then the needle goes down the other side of the bead. So it's coming up, through and down. Don't come out the same hole because otherwise the bead will move. What you can do here as well is a laying tool might help. This is just a gold work malore to help to use to lay your threads in gold work, but you might have a normal sewing um a, a, <clears throat> a sewing one. Or you can just use a large needle if you haven't got one of these. So you can just catch the thread and you can help guide that down. That's twisted up a bit, so like so. I'm going to put a second stitch through that. These ones are bigger. Think they just need a bit more security so I'll come up the other side and just thread my needle through my bead and down the other side as simple as that okay so let's put those lovely spangles on that I like so much I'm going to put that in the middle of I'm going to call this a flower in the middle of the flower petal so the way that I'm going to do it, there's a couple of ways. You can just sew the spangle down on its own, um, but I'm going to put it down with a bead as I'm using beads. This is a really nice method. You don't see any of the thread either. So if I get myself a spangle, there we go. Now I'm going to just leave my needle in the fabric there and put that over the top. You can then decide how far out you want it. So if you want it to come into the space a bit more, just move your needle. So don't pull the needle through. Use that to help you decide where you want it first. Um, that's a pretty good guess. <laughs> I'm going to leave it there. So I'm going to come up right through the middle of that spangle. 
And again, just push it to the bottom of the thread so that it lies nice and flat. Now I'm going to use a bead, as I said, to put that down. So I'm going to use one of these little white pearly ones. And then you thread on your bead and push that down the thread as well. So it sits on top of the spangle. And then I'm going to go back down the spangle so the loop through the bead and it's holding the spangle on with the bead. So I've come up through the bead. I'm going to go back through the spangle. You can just go back in a different place you came out. That will make it a bit stronger. And if I pull that down slowly, hopefully you'll see what's happening. And the bead will tip over like that, just pulling on that, and that's going to hold the spangle in place. Okay, so I'm going to work around all of those first, and um, before I show you how to put some pearls on. So I finished um, just this little flower area here. Um, I'm sure you agree how, how beautiful that looks. Beads are a brilliant way of adding some instant texture and some sparkle and a bit of luxury to your embroidery. So do consider them because they are really beautiful. So we're going to have a look at the pearls. But just before we do that, I want to show you uh, two extra prizes for two lucky runners up. So we decided that one prize wasn't enough and we needed to give away some more prizes but we we're feeling quite generous today so we've got some extra things to give away. So for two lucky runners up we have got two extra skeins of 24 karat gold thread. So these just come in the box as they are, they don't come in the presentation box but they are the same thread, the 24 karat gold. So something really really worth winning. Um, we can't give away a hundred thousand pounds worth of prizes but we can do a hundred pounds worth so we've got a hundred pounds worth of gold thread for you to have a go at winning and as if that wasn't enough I'm also going to throw in for each of our three winners so these two and the presentation pack a pack of gold plated um, cross stitch needles as well for you to use with this thread so definitely worth having a go at this but you will need to do that in the previous video to this one I'll put that up here it's still up in this corner here we'll also put it up at the end of this video as well so do go and check that out you'll need to enter on that video there not on this one please on that video um, and have a go at winning these threads definitely worth it really really great prizes here um, so don't miss out on that one Okay, so we've got a few extra things I just want to show you. So we're going to put a pearl in there. We're going to put one of the red beads here. And I just want to show you how I'm going to put on this beautiful one I showed you earlier at the bottom, just to finish it off. So let's put the pearl on first. Let's get those out of the way. Now, they're no different really to beads, other than that what can often happen with a pearl. I'll try and show you if I can. You can pick it up. This is what happens, they ping around all over the place. I want to show you the hole in it if I can. I should have thought about this before I started. Down this route, there we go. Called it. I hope you can see that. They have tiny holes in them, basically much smaller than beads do. So you really do need to check that your needle goes through it first. If you're having trouble with it, even with a number 12 embroidery needle, just lie that down there so it doesn't disappear. You can try a straw needle. Now a straw needle is a very fine needle and the eye is the same width as the shaft of the needle so that because usually the eye that's the problem that's the bit that won't go through um, and it's the same length so these ones are really good for this sort of purpose as well. I'll just show you what one of those looks like. Quite long as well. Let's get it out of the packet. So there's my number 12 embroidery. You can see how long the sharps is and it's got this tiny little eye, it's much smaller, so they are a bit tricky to, to thread, um, but it should find that that goes through your pearl a little bit better. So if you are struggling with small beads or with pearls or anything like that, do consider a straws needle to help you. I've tried this on my needle, so I'm happy that this is going to go through. So I'm just going to thread it on as before, down to the bottom. Just position it in place. I'm just going to fill that shape. This is the bottom heart now. Down the other side. And because that eye, that eye, because the hole is so fine, we're not going to get two threads through it. I will try. But you may not. Oh, it does go through. That's fine. So if it's a little bit small for that, just one will be fine. Just use a strong thread. Make sure you wax it first. And down 
the other side. Now I just want to mention at this point about finishing your threads. It's very easy for things like beads to fall off. If you've ever had an antique um, piece of embroidery you'll probably find it's the beads that are dropping off from that because either the thread has perished if they've used silk or they haven't finished it off properly on the back. So I am just going to turn this over and show you how to do that. So this is the back here. This is where I've just put the pearl on. There's my thread. I appreciate that's a little bit tricky to see. And all I'm going to do is to take it under some of those gold stitches, so close by to where I finished. And you can do this as many times as you like, as you feel you need to, for this to be really secure. So just round and round these stitches a few times. That's three, but let's get another one. And then the last time round, that makes a loop. And I'm just going to put the needle through the loop. It kind of does a sort of a knot just to secure it a little bit more back underneath some of those threads. Happy that that's really secure and you can just cut that off at that point. And if you do that with all of your beads and sequins, they shouldn't fall off. So I've just got two more I want to show you because I want to show you how I'm finishing off the bottom of this. I'm just going to put another of these red ones on like we did earlier. Thread it on to the bottom and I'm going to put it at the bottom there. It does actually cover that cross stitch, but I don't mind that. That's one of those examples of things changing. And if you knew you were going to put it there, you could leave a space for it, but it can just go over the top. That's fine. And then this bead that I want to show you is actually different. So this bead Bring it around all over the place again. Let's try this to be a bit more successful. Got it, I think. There we go. It's got a hole through the end, so it doesn't go through the middle of the bead. It's going that way across the end of the bead. So I'm going to put it in that position. And the hole goes across that way so my thread is going to have to go that way as well and then it kind of dangles so if you want um, it to sort of dangle but exactly the same applies otherwise we're going to come up one side through the bead down the other Ooh, it's all over the place use the right hand <clears throat> now it's more iridescent on one side than it is on the other so can use the more iridescent side i think There we go. Just a bit fiddly until I get it in place. So down the other side and that will hold it. There we go. Got the first side, we're going to go back through again for that extra security of two stitches. And down the other side. Like so. So it's just going to move a little bit, but it looks like it's dangling off the bottom. So that will look quite nice, I think. So you can start to see now how this is coming together and how pretty it's going to look when it's finished. So I'm going to just sit and work through the rest of it. You don't need to see me do all of that. So I'm going to repeat the flower over here and I'm going to add a lot more down here. I'm going to do the little crown so it looks like a little crown as well. And you can choose however you want to put your beads on. It's totally up to you. There's infinite number of uh, combinations so don't worry about getting the right one and um, just have some fun with it and put them where you want to so I'm going to do that and um, when I finish that I am going to mount it because it's going to go back in the display box and um, I'm just going to run through quickly I'm going to do that so I've got two pieces of cardboard I've cut I know this fits in the box I've checked that already and I'm going to cover these with a dark fabric now this is an Ada fabric that I've worked on a cross stitch fabric it's got holes in it you can see through it. if I cover this in white that white's going to show through the holes so I'm covering in a dark fabric so that that doesn't happen and I'm going to mount that in the traditional way we do have a video on that as well if you want to know how to mount your work professionally do check that one out and I'm going to do that and get it back in the box so if you want to see what this embroidery looks like when it's finished and um, want to see how I'm going to mount that what it looks like when it's mounted and it's going back in the box as well do check out um, our next video that will be up on um, next Friday um, and of course I will be doing the draw as well um, and you do want to be there for that one to see if you're one of our three lucky winners to get your hands on some real 24 karat gold thread
So I hope you've enjoyed that little look in how you can embellish your embroideries with lots of beautiful sparkly things. If you've enjoyed this video, do give it a thumbs up. That really helps us because more people will get to see the video. And don't forget to check out the video on our giveaway. So how you can get your hands on some gold thread or have a go at getting your hands on some gold thread. That's up here. And I'm going to mount this project um, professionally. And you can see a video on how I'm going to do that down here. And then we will see you next time for the draw.